I've recently begun playing a little bit of Morrowind here and there to investigate what necromancy mods are available for it. The bad news is that it seems that there are a lot of great necromancy mods for Morrowind that are no longer obtainable because the websites that hosted them no longer exist. But the good news is that a lot of them can still be found on the Mod History website, and a few of them are also on the Nexus. I did a lot of searching and managed to unearth these interesting ones. The first two I'll cover now in this video, and the rest I'll cover in the future. I actually tried covering Dopey Necromancy first, but I had to put it on hold because it's extremely time consuming, which is actually a general problem with a lot of these mods you're about to see. Minion the Uncompanion is aimed at level 1 players and it gives you an undead companion called Minion, as well as a pretty nice house. When you start the game you'll notice a black skull on the desk near your immigration papers. After you've left the beginner section you can activate this skull which will teleport you to a rather unassuming looking house. Search the house and you'll find a key which you can use to unlock the basement. Once inside you'll find a neat home with an alchemy sorter plus a book containing all possible recipes, as well as a servant mage that sells you beginner spells, a few mannequins, a bed, and all the other stuff you'd expect to find in a house. Going deeper into the house, you'll find a room with Minion inside, and a dead necromancer on the floor. Minion looks like a skeleton with ram's horns, and he has a bit of a backstory. You can talk to him about it. He'll tell you he's a daedra, and the guy who summoned him was a weakling, so he killed him. Fortunately, he seems to like you though, and he doesn't want to give you the same treatment he gave that dead guy. Instead, he wants to be your loyal companion. You can give him the dead guy's face, which Minion will wear as a disguise. But in my experience, it hasn't helped much. Most NPCs who see you with Minion will be hostile to you, even with his disguise on, but they'll only attack if you talk to them. If Minion is seen without his mask on, it seems you accumulate a bounty. I took Minion's mask off in public, and I got a 450 gold bounty. Then Minion himself tried to arrest me and started beating me up, which caused my other minions, which I summoned using the Beast of Burden Necromancer mod, to attack him and kill him. So my advice would be don't take his disguise off. The mod appears to be missing some files because whenever Minion entered combat, I get messages about missing sound files. To resolve this, I just created the missing files myself with bogus sound files. Minion seems like a pretty decent companion, and he can carry your stuff for you, and also offer you assistance in combat when you're a level 1 weakling, and you're going to need all the help you can get. Which will be a lot of help, because most of these Morrowind Necromancy mods require you to invest a hideous amount of time, effort, and money before being able to create the weakest and most worthless of minions. Which brings me to the next mod, Beasts of Burden Necromancer. The minions granted by this mod are pretty nice, you can summon a limitless amount of minions provided you have the ingredients and enough life to withstand the HP cost of summoning them. It's because of this that you may want to choose Endurance as a primary attribute for your class. With Endurance you can get more HP and you'll be able to summon more powerful creatures earlier on. The weakest minion you can make is the Humble Skeleton, and he's got about 37 life, so summoning it will damage you for that amount, as well as depleting your fatigue a bit. If you aren't careful, using these spells will kill you, so you have to make sure that you have enough life to survive the spell. For the most part, I think this is a nice system. I think it would be better if the minions had an upkeep cost instead of a one-time hit. For example, if each time you summoned a skeleton, it would apply a negative 5 HP debuff. So if you've got 40 HP and you've summoned 5 skeletons, you'd only have 15 HP left and be vulnerable to be killed in like one hit by whatever enemy hits you. This would make you an extremely squishy caster, and of course the more powerful minions you had, the more HP would be taken. I think this would be a better system than the current system. The minions in this mod are very capable, and you can have as many of them as you want, so they're very plentiful. You also get a good variety of potential minions. You can even get non-undead, like Atronarchs. Sadly, this mod has two big problems though. The first problem with this mod is finding the spells. The spells are granted by scrolls that you find in dungeon loot, but it's a matter of raiding ruins, crypts, and dungeons until you're lucky enough to maybe find a scroll. This might be okay if you're a patient player and you're willing to have a long period of minionless combat, doing everything yourself, until you by pure luck somehow manage to stumble across one of the spells. But even a patient player isn't safe from the second problem, the spell ingredients. 
Do you remember how I recently made a video about the corpse preparation mod for Skyrim? And I gave it a pretty hard time because of the stupidly expensive and hard to get ritual ingredients. Well, if you can believe it, this mod manages to outdo the corpse preparation mod. Get this. To summon a basic skeleton, you require one iron shield, 20 bone meal, two diamonds, and one skull. 20 bone meal is already going to take you several tomb raids to accumulate. And for the weakest summon, this alone would already be bad enough in my opinion. But on top of this, it asks you for two diamonds. Now at level one, you're not going to be finding any diamonds. Probably not for the first several levels actually. If you want to buy them, diamonds are worth 250 each, and the shop will probably charge you more than that to make profit. So you're probably looking at around 400 or 500 each, if not more. So if your most basic minion was about as strong as a weak bandit and will die pretty easily, you're looking at a cost of at least 1000 gold. These insane ingredient requirements only get worse as the minions get better. A skeleton warrior also wants emeralds. I'm not sure how anyone is meant to get these minions without resorting to cheats. If you're a masochist and you want to spend hundreds of hours accumulating all the ingredients you need and somehow finding all the spells, then I guess this is the perfect mod for you. But if you're looking for a mod which you can use necromancy from the get-go and then that will slowly scale up as you level, enabling you to use necromancy for the entire game, this really isn't the mod for you. I'm mostly disappointed by this mod, but the saving grace is that you can get many minions and they're good in combat. I won't give Minion the Young Companion the score. It's not really a necromancy mod. It's a necromancy themed companion and house mod, and it does a good, although somewhat buggy job of that, and to score it would be unfair. Beasts of Burden Necromancer is an actual necromancy mod though, so it's going to be scored. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. It's a harsh score, but I'm not very happy with a mod that requires so much of my time before I can even begin to have fun with it. Then asks for insanely expensive and rare ingredients for the simplest of minions. If you're going to use this mod, I'd recommend you use cheats for it. Instead of spending dozens of hours and fighting the spells and ingredients, open up the mod in the construction set and go to the books section. Write down all the IDs for the books prefixed with B.O.B. These will be the spell scrolls, which will tell you what ingredients you need for the spells. Then go to the spells tab and write down those as well. You can then give yourself the scrolls and the spells and add in the rare ingredients like diamonds and emeralds to give yourself a little starter army and have some fun being a necromancer. A better thing to do, if you can be bothered, would be to open up the mod in the construction set and tweak all the spell requirements to be something a bit more sane. That will allow you to play the mod properly. So in conclusion, Beasts of Burden Necromancer is not satisfying due to the stupidly over-the-top ingredient costs and the difficulty of finding the spells. Satisfying necromancy is not possible with this mod because cheating is ultimately unsatisfying. I'm looking forward to seeing what some of these other mods have to offer, and I'm sure that one of them will offer something more satisfying. By the way, a couple of people asked me about setting up a Discord, so I did actually set one up. I haven't used it much yet though. If you go and check the description of this video, you'll see a link to that.